Hi class, how are you today? Oh, really? I'm I'm so sorry. All right, let, let's move on. Um, so the learning target for today is to solve absolute value equations. So we've already been solving absolute value equations, but these ones will include with operations happening outside of the absolute value. All right, so here's an example of an equation that we're going to deal with. So notice that we have absolute value of 2x plus 5, but then we have that minus 2, and then that equals 10. So remember, first thing you're supposed to do with an absolute value equation is to split it into two equations. How about, however, for this one, the only time you can split it up is when the entire left side is inside the absolute value. So we need the absolute value of 2x plus 5 to be the only thing that stays on the left side. So we need to get rid of this minus 2 here. So we need to do the opposite. Opposite of minus 2 is plus 2. So we plus 2 to both sides. And like usual, that cancels. So on the left side, we're left with the absolute value of 2x plus 5. And on the right side, we have 12. Now we turn it into two separate equations. So first equation will be 2x plus 5 equals 12. And the other equation will be 2x plus 5 equals negative 12. So remember, two equations, one with a positive answer, one with a negative. Then we solve. Undo the addition first, so subtract 5 from both sides. And we have 2x equals 7. Divide by 2. And we are left with x equals 7 over 2 which, as a mixed number, would be 3.5. But I will take the answer as 7 over 2. That's a perfectly fine answer. Do the same thing on the other side. Subtract 5, and you're left with 2x equals negative 17. Divide both sides by 2, and you have x equals negative 17 over 2 or negative 8.5. Again, the fractions are fine to leave as an answer. Now we need to graph it. So we make our number line and plot our points. So first we have 3.5, which is halfway between 3 and 4, about right there and negative 8.5, which is halfway between negative 8 and negative 9, which is about right there. And that's all you do. So first, just remember, make it so the left side is entirely just the absolute value. Undo anything happening there. All right, I have a couple more examples for you. All right, here's another example. So again, we need to undo everything that's happening to this absolute value here. So we're having it subtracted by 4 and multiplied by 3. So we sort of have to work with this absolute value as if it's just a variable on its own. So first let's get rid of the minus 4. And we'll add 4 to both sides. So that'll give us that cancel, and we're left with just 3 times the absolute value of x plus 6, and then e equals 12. Then we have to get rid of that 3 in front of the absolute value. So again, we do the opposite. It's multiplying by 3, so we need to divide by 3. 
So divide both sides by 3, and that cancels the 3's out here to leave just the absolute value of x plus 6. And on the right side, we have 4. So now we have two equations. So we have to have x plus 6 equals 4, and x plus 6 equals negative 4. And solve each. Undo the addition, subtract 6 from both sides, we get x equals negative 2. And subtract 6 from both sides, and that gives us x equals negative 10. Those are our answers, and then again, we draft them. So we take our negative 2 and plot it at negative 2, and negative 10 plotted at negative 10. So again, we got everything down to where it was just the absolute value on the left side, and then turned it into two equations and solved. All right, one more example, and then we're done. So again, we have negative 4 times the absolute value of x plus 3, plus 7 equals 19. So we need to get rid of the plus 7 first, and then the negative 4 to leave, so we just have the absolute value on the left side. So, subtract 7 from both sides. The 7s cancel to leave us with negative 4 times the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 12. Then we need to undo that multiplication happening right here. So we divide both sides by negative 4, and we get the absolute value of x plus 3 equals negative 3. Remember, we've talked about this a couple times. If you ever get an absolute value equal to a negative number, because absolute values make a number positive, so there's no way this could make a number negative, that means the answer to this, solu to this equation and every equation where the absolute value equals a negative number is no solution. So if you ever have an absolute value equal a negative number, you get no solution. We had to do some steps to get there, but we still got no solution. All right, that's it for this lesson today. Please make sure to take notes on the entire video. And from now on, remember, as soon as you finish the notes, take a picture and submit them to me onto eBackpack. All right, see you next class. Have a good night.